how to know if it's postpartum bleeding or a period. All women experience postpartum bleeding after giving birth, and it can persist for up to 6 to 8 weeks. After that, if the mother is not breastfeeding or using hormonal contraception, the regular menstrual cycle should resume. There are a few obvious indications you can look out for to determine whether postpartum bleeding has stopped and regular menstruation has started. Part 1. Identifying the differences. 1. Pay attention to the timing. How long you breastfeed often has no bearing on when your periods start again after nursing. If you nurse for just 3 months, your periods will probably start up again a few weeks after you finish, but if you breastfeed for 18 months, you might go the entire time without having a period. Contra Riley, postpartum bleeding begins practically immediately after delivery and can linger for 6 to 8 weeks before stopping. Breastfeeding causes the body to release prolactin hormones, which keep progesterone and estrogen levels low and delays the onset of menstruation. Even if a woman chooses not to breastfeed, her period won't begin for a few weeks after giving birth. Approximately 6 to 12 weeks after having birth, 70% of women resume their regular menstrual cycle. Only 3 to 6 days should pass during the entire duration. 2. Look at the color. It's crucial to be aware that postpartum bleeding will have a somewhat different blood color from menstruation. For the first three days after postpartum bleeding, the blood appears brilliant red in hue. The discharge then undergoes color variations from pinkish red to reddish brownish from days 4 to 10, depending on the presence of different substances such as old blood, white blood cells, and tissue debris. A white discharge could be seen after day 10. Leukocytes, white blood cells, mucus, and epithelial cells make up this discharge. Although the hue of menstrual blood may initially be brilliant red, it will eventually turn dark crimson, black, or brown as the period comes to an end. 3. Pay attention to the blood flow. Compared to menstruation, postpartum bleeding has a greater blood flow. The postpartum bleeding will typically be heavy for the first four days before gradually lessening over the following few days slash weeks. Call your doctor right away if you are soaking a super pad every hour for at least three hours or experience blood clots larger than a golf ball after the first two to three days. Although the typical blood loss during menstruation is only 10 milliliters to 80 milliliters, blood flow is also at its peak during the first three to four days. Knowing that one tampon retains around 5 milliliters of blood makes it simple to calculate the volume of blood. So, to calculate the total blood flow in milliliters, count the number of tampons you use and multiply that figure by 5. 4. Recognize postpartum bleeding. A condition known as postpartum hemorrhage, which affects 1 in 100 to 5 in 100 women, could happen to you. In contrast to postpartum bleeding, postpartum hemorrhage necessitates prompt medical intervention. The placenta fragments that are still attached, a cervix or other tissue break, or a blood clotting condition can all result in postpartum bleeding. This can result in shock, which can be fatal if not handled. Postpartum bleeding symptoms include A resumption of bright red bleeding with or without clots after vaginal discharge has grown lighter or become brown in color, or bleeding that soaks more than one pad each hour over the course of two hours. Reduction in blood pressure Higher heart rate Red blood cell count dropping Support my channel please by clicking the subscribe button. Subscribe now, if you are gaining value. Part 2. Treating Postpartum Bleeding 1. Change your diet. Iron is also lost along with blood. Increase the quantity of iron you consume every day to prevent iron insufficiency. There are many meals that naturally contain a lot of iron. As follows. Legumes with kidney or pindo beans. Chicken, beef, or liver. Asparagus or broccoli. Kelp, parsley, and okra beet greens or mustard greens, prune juice, raisins, dried peaches, or plums, wheat bran, molasses blackstrap. 2. Consume iron supplements. 
There is no need to take any medication for light or typical postpartum bleeding because the bleeding will cease on its own in 6 to 2 months at most. However, your doctor may recommend or prescribe iron supplements for you if you exhibit any signs of anemia as a result of the blood loss. With an acidic juice like pineapple or orange juice, most over-the-counter vitamins are fine and absorb better. If you are unclear about which brand to select, ask your doctor or pharmacist for advice. Normally taken once daily, these supplements may need to be taken more frequently depending on how severe your anemia is. To prevent constipation, which can be a common adverse effect, they should be taken after meals. Other gastrointestinal issues including nausea or vomiting could also manifest. You might also have a green stool. 3. Seek medical attention for postpartum bleeding. To prevent shock, you must seek prompt medical attention if you are experiencing postpartum bleeding. Treatments could consist of to protect end organs from harm and to sustain essential organs like the brain, heart, kidneys, and liver, a blood transfusion may be required. The considerable blood loss will be made up for by this blood transfusion. N4 will be filled with oxytocin to induce uterine contractions and stop the bleeding. Oxytocin primarily affects the smooth uterine muscles lining, where it interacts with certain receptors to stimulate powerful uterine contractions. In order to cause additional vasoconstriction, it also raises intracellular calcium levels. Part 3. Understanding the Physiological Processes 1. Be aware of what causes postpartum bleeding. If all goes well, the uterus will continue to contract after giving birth in order to discharge any leftover placental material. Additionally, all of the blood arteries that had been supporting the fetus are sealed off throughout this procedure. The leftover material is what causes postpartum bleeding. The stage of involution, a typical physiological response in which the uterus returns to its non-pregnant state, is when this bleeding takes place in the uterus. Since the bleeding is under control, there shouldn't be any negative effects. The outer layer of the tissue that borders the uterus gradually peels off over time and is expelled. Lochia is the name for this discharge. These processes are entirely anticipated and usual. Normally, the uterus will heal on its own, and the lochia will end in six weeks. 2. Be aware of what causes menstrual bleeding. The uterus is lined with a nutrient-rich coating during a woman's typical menstrual cycle to get ready for the arrival of a fertilized egg. When fertilization does not take place, this lining contracts and sheds before the unfertilized egg is ejected from the body. A new lining forms when the old one is eliminated, and the cycle repeats. Generally speaking, a woman's menstrual cycle lasts between 2 and 7 days and happens every 28 days, though this varies from woman to woman. 3. Look for unusual postpartum bleeding. Postpartum bleeding can occasionally become excessive and pose major health hazards. If you go through one or more sanitary pads each hour, have blood clots that are at least the size of golf balls, or still see bright red blood after four days, you are bleeding excessively. There are several reasons why this might happen, including The most frequent reason for severe postpartum bleeding is uterine anatomy. Due to lengthy labor, illness, tiredness, or the use of specific medications, NSAIDs, nitrates, the uterus becomes unable to continue contracting which causes the blood to seep freely out of the body. Retention of the placenta or insufficient dissociation, simply put, this occurs when the placenta does not fully separate from the uterus. Postpartum bleeding is a result of the retained placenta. Uterine trauma can occur for a variety of causes, including difficult birth or attempting to remove the retained placenta, either manually, with special instruments, or with drugs that induce labor such as oxytocin. All of these items have the potential to injure the uterus or vaginal tract, resulting in profuse bleeding. Other factors Other probable causes of postpartum bleeding include obesity, hypertension, infections, and an overly extended uterus, perhaps from giving birth to twins. Medical Disclaimer This article's information is not meant to replace seeking professional medical advice, testing, diagnosis, or treatment. 
before beginning, altering, or ending any type of healthcare therapy, you should always speak with your doctor or another licensed healthcare expert.